G'day everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at hydraulics, the absolute basic fundamentals that make up a hydraulic system. The same hydraulic system we find in earth moving equipment, trucks, and forklifts as well. Now the basics we'll look at today that make up the system are the hydraulic tank, the hydraulic pump or motor, hydraulic cylinders, control valves, relief valves, makeup valves, accumulators, and ride control as well. So firstly, what is a hydraulic system? It's basically a system in a machine that uses hydraulic oil or some other kind of fluid under very high pressure in order to do work. We might use that pressure to move cylinders so we can break ground or steer a machine. And we also might use that fluid under pressure to turn a motor. We might be driving a fan, we might be slewing an excavator, or we might be tramming an excavator forward and backwards using hydraulic motors. Either way, the fundamental principle is we have hydraulic fluid under pressure so we can use it to store energy and do work. So let's start at the very beginning of the system. We have a hydraulic tank that is used to store as much fluid or oil as the vehicle or machine needs to do the work. From the hydraulic tank, we have a hydraulic pump. Now the pump pulls hydraulic fluid out of the tank and creates flow. It doesn't create pressure, the pump can only create flow. It will draw the fluid out of the tank and deliver it into the system in two types of ways. We have a gear pump, which is considered a fixed displacement pump. It's called fixed displacement because every revolution of a gear pump will produce the same amount of oil delivered into the system. We also have piston pumps, which are called a variable displacement pump. If the piston pump has a swash plate that can be moved forwards and backwards, we can stroke up the pump and for every rotation of the pump, it can deliver a different amount of oil. Therefore, it is a variable displacement pump and we can stroke it up and down depending on how much fluid we want to deliver into the system. Now, of course, these pumps need to be driven by something and usually that is a combustion engine or an electric motor of some kind to drive the pump to give us that hydraulic energy. Now where we have hydraulic pumps, whether it be gear or piston, in many cases on the other end of the circuit, we may have a hydraulic motor. They look the same as the pumps, but instead of being driven, they are the driver. So we use hydraulic fluid coming out of the pumps, which are driven, to turn the hydraulic motors, which are drivers. They may drive the machine backwards and forwards, or like a slew motor, they may slew an excavator left or right. They basically receive hydraulic fluid in order to do rotational work. Now the hydraulic pumps will pull this oil out of the hydraulic tank through a screen to keep any contaminants from reaching the pump. Once they've grabbed that oil and pumped it into the system, it will eventually reach the control valve. Now a control valve is a block with a spool inside it, sometimes many spools controlled by the operator. Whether it's directly controlled with cables or linkages, whether it's controlled with pilot oil pressure, which is a small amount of oil pressure used to move the spools backwards and forwards to control the main oil pressure or electronically controlled. Now it's these control valves that allow us to create pressure in the system. Without a control valve, a hydraulic pump will only create flow and that oil will flow out into nothingness. When we have a control valve, we have a dead head in the system and the hydraulic pumps will continue to provide oil and the pressure will increase in the system. That pressure is regulated usually by a relief valve or several relief valves. What a relief valve does is it will have a spring and a poppet valve and it will divert back to tank. Once the pressure reaches the amount to overcome the spring, the relief valve will open and allow the oil to return back to tank or to another system if it's required elsewhere. Now, as we mentioned, the control valve is a finely machined block with spools inside it. As we open the spools with the controller operating the machine, oil will be allowed to be diverted to whatever system we require. As we open the spool more and more, we get more and more fluid. In the case of an excavator, the more and more we push the sticks forwards, the faster the excavator will travel because we are providing more and more fluid to the travel motors. The spools themselves will also open ports to allow oil to return to tank. So if we have a steering cylinder, we might deliver oil to one end of the rod and we may allow oil to come back from the other end. So as we steer the machine, oil is being pressurized into one end of the cylinder and released from the other to allow the machine to actually turn left or right. 
These control valves usually are a combination of many spools, so we can do many different operations with one main control valve. They also have relief valves built into them to allow them to control the system main pressure. Now that takes us to hydraulic cylinders. They basically consist of a chrome rod with an eyelet on the end. We have a gland that slides over that rod that allows fluid to be pressurized into that side of the cylinder. We have a piston that screws on with a big nut and that accepts seals and wiper bands. And we have a barrel as well. Now the barrel, the head and the rod all bolt together with the piston inside the barrel to separate the head end and the rod end of the cylinder. If we pressurize one end, the cylinder will extend and the oil will flow out of the other. Of course, vice versa, we can retract or extend the rod depending which side we open and which side we allow fluid to flow into. Hydraulic cylinders are designed in such a way that one end will create more breakout force than the other. If we put oil into the barrel end or the head or cap end, it will create more force than if we put oil into the rod end. Because there's a rod in the way on that end, it has less surface area, therefore produces less force. If we put 4,000 PSI into the barrel and it has more surface area, of course, it's gonna create more breakout force. And the machines are designed in such a way to use the cylinders to their best advantage. You can see here a machine with a Z-Link. We are pumping oil into the barrel end of the cylinder in order to create the most force to tilt the bucket back. It's harder to tilt the bucket back than it is to crowd it forward because gravity helps us out. The same goes with boom cylinders and lift cylinders on loaders as well. We use the most powerful side of the cylinder in order to lift against gravity, usually when we have a loaded bucket. It's much easier to drop the implements or put them into float using the rod end of the cylinder because gravity is helping us out. Knowing this makes it easy to test hydraulic cylinders to see if there is an internal leak. If we pressurize both sides of the hydraulic cylinder with the same amount of pressure, if there's an internal leak, the ram will actually start to extend because the barrel end or the head end has more mechanical advantage over the rod end. So if the pressures are equal, of course, the rod will extend if there is an internal leak. Now, when we start talking about makeup valves, their design is to make up for any lack of fluid in the system. If we think about a hydraulic fan motor, when we turn the engine off, the fan will continue to turn. It's rather heavy, it's turning very fast, and it will keep idling on. Of course, there's no fluid being supplied because the engine is off. A makeup valve will grab any fluid coming out of the outlet side of the motor and redirect it back into the inlet side to ensure there is enough oil going into the motor to maintain lubrication and make sure we don't get any air in there for cavitation purposes as well. Now next up we have accumulators. It's basically a pressurized vessel, a little bit like a tank, but under quite a bit of pressure from a spring or nitrogen charge. They can be a bladder type or they can be a piston type. Their job is to accumulate hydraulic pressure in a pressurized vessel so we can use it in the event of an emergency. If the engine shuts down unexpectedly, we can use the accumulator to power the steering or anything else that we require in an emergency. It accumulates a small amount of hydraulic fluid under quite a bit of pressure so we can use it when things are shut down unexpectedly. In the absence of an accumulator, we can use a secondary steering pump, usually an electric pump that will kick in if the engine is shut down without using the key. So the engine dies for some reason, we might run out of fuel or we might have a failure. The secondary pump will kick in and allow us to continue to use our steering so we can stop the machine or vehicle safely. Accumulators in the system can also be used for things like ride control. They can cushion a hydraulic circuit from spikes much faster than a relief valve can. Because we have a piston and a spring or nitrogen charge pressure, that can move up and down in order to cushion out any hydraulic spikes. In ride control, this is perfect because when we have a bucket full of aggregate and we're driving down a road, we don't want the machine to rock backwards and forwards with a solid hydraulic circuit. The accumulator can cushion out any spikes in that circuit and allow the bucket to move slightly up and down to take out any shock loading and smooth out the ride of the machine. We switch it on and we can tram the machine a long way with the bucket up full of aggregate comfortably without losing control of the machine thanks to ride control. 
And that is pretty much the basic fundamentals that make up a hydraulic circuit in order to move implements and machines around a mine site. Of course, there is a lot more going on in the hydraulic circuit in very fine detail, and I could go on for hours about it, but that is the basics that make up a hydraulic circuit in order to make a machine go. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.